Welcome back to episode 191 of the God and Guns podcast. I'm your host, Troy. And I'm your other host, Doug. We use this podcast to talk about God, guns, the responsible Christian gun owner's interest. On this show, on this week's show, we'll be talking about everything ammunition with some of our Antirius Alliance buddies. And they'll be joining us a little bit later in the show. I want to thank Bandwidth Sponsor, the Firearms Radio Network. We appreciate them sponsoring our bandwidth over on iTunes and Farm Radio Network site and all the places they pay to have it out there. So I appreciate that. I also want to thank Crossbreed Holsters. If you're carrying a gun on your person or in your vehicle or even in a pocketbook, and you're not carrying in a Crossbreed Holster, shame on you. Go check them out. Crossbreedholsters.com. Carry the cross. Carry the cross. I'm just getting the crumbs off my shirt. I ate supper while I was working on the show here. (laughs) Had some deer sausage and some cheese and a couple of these little bitty, I don't know, something I shouldn't be eating. Meat thins and poor man's a meal. <laughs> I got I got my deer back from the processor the other day. They called me Saturday. Yeah. And uh, I went and picked it up. That joker made almost four paper grocery bags, three quarters full of hamburger and cube steak. Cool. And I was like, man, so I went and picked it up, and the, the boy was giving it to me. He said, yeah, we, we make sausage and this and that and other stuff. I said, yeah. I said, uh, my boss had got some uh, sausage made with you guys. I thought it was pretty good, and uh, it was jalapeno cheddar. Mm-hmm. And he said, did you like it? I said, yeah, the little piece I had was pretty good. I said, I might have to get something made. He said, you want some? I said, well. I said, yeah. I said, how much is it? He goes, ah, we give, we give it away, man. So people can try it, you know, so, so they can see. I was like, well, yeah, sign me up coach. And he comes out and has a half a bag of, oh, gosh. <laughs> of, of that jalapeno cheddar sausage. Yeah. I was like, man, let me pay you for something for it. He goes, no, nah, man. He said, take it, share it with your friends. Maybe that'll get them to buy some too. Yeah, that's cool. I came home, fired the Weber up, and throwed her on there. And <laughs> yes, indeedy, it was good. Yeah, I, I tell you, I, I've uh, I've acquired a taste for it. My daughter uh, Audrey, she loves it. Uh, so our, our our good friend Gary goes to church with us. He got he gave us a whole bunch of his uh, deer sausage just last year, and uh, we've been. Eating. Audrey and I have been eating on hard. <laughs> we, we we pull one out of the freezer and put it in the refrigerator for a couple of days, let it thaw out and slice it up. It's it's uh, made up like summer sausage. And oh good. yeah, that's some good stuff. Yeah, it's oh man, man, all them deer you got running around out there in your field and stuff, man. I got no excuse now. You ought to go ahead and pop you one every once in a while. Yeah, well, it's deer, it's bow season right now, so I need to. I don't have a bow. I'm bow bow poor right now. I was going to buy one a while back and then. I waited too late. Now it's in season, so everybody's like prices went up on here books. No, I know. Like, <laughs> uh, let's wait until rifle season. All right, so let's see where are we at. Oh, this week's guy and gun activities. What are you been up to? Uh, God activities. Week? I've been doing my daily devotionals, um, my sportsman's daily daily guide, and words from jesus for men uh the gun side ain't really done a whole lot this week man we've been working um of course i've been everyday carrying uh i got to do a little bit of bow hunting this week not much i did pop out a couple guns I, we, Troy, we were just talking a minute ago about um how dusty your glock gets with yeah. <laughs> with junk in it from just carrying it so i cleaned a couple of my guns out the other, the other night i got to got the lube out and clean them up and i've been rigging duck decoys and getting those ready to go out you know we're 58 days away from opening day of duck season but who's counting <laughs> nobody's counting but duck. <laughs> nobody's counting and uh <laughs> i've been uh i've been booking hunts man with the new guide service we are uh we are rocking and rolling this year awesome plug that how if they want to hunt where are they gonna find you uh, you go find me down in Arkansas, down in Stuttgart, Arkansas, and you can go check it out at foulintent.com. And that's F O W L. So go check it out. You, well, I'm on Facebook. I got Facebook and everything. So Facebook, Instagram. The, uh, I do have Instagram. Uh, your wife intent. something over there. I think it was your wife. Yeah. Foul intent guide service. And, uh, I just need to hire her as my media coordinator, man. Let her go for it. She's got it going on. 
she's got all kind of stuff. I, I get stuff on Facebook all the time where she's checked into foul intent. I'm like, it ain't even ducks easy. You're not checking into nothing, but she's po she's posting stuff over for me. So she makes up some pretty cool stuff once in a while. You won't get a Democrat out there. That's for sure. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, no, probably not. Very windy. I, I told her the best thing I could ever do for her for a birthday or Christmas present is, is, uh, <laughs> get her where she can meet Donald Trump one time. <laughs> She's on fire. I like her. Man. She's feisty. <laughs> yes, she is. She, uh, she keeps, she keeps CNN well posted. I tell you, <laughs> mm. But she enjoy, she keeps up. She she asks me every day. She's like, "Did you see what North Korea is doing today? Do you see what China did? Do you see this?" I'm like, "No, nah, I didn't see none of it. I didn't. I don't. I don't usually get a chance when I'm at work to look at stuff. And when I get home, I, I'm just too tired to mess with it." Yep, I know what you mean. You get your stuff. That's it. That's me. I was I was easy this week. All right. So, uh, God said, uh, got to go church Sunday, Wednesday night. Uh, I did pull like a youth security Wednesday night. We've been having some trouble with some people making on doors and trying to come in and ask for money and stuff. Uh oh. And so, uh, my good friend, um, Carrie was able to watch the security room for me. So I was able to go into the youth and hear part of the lesson and be there with the kids a little bit. Didn't get to interact a whole lot, but I stayed out front and just, so I'll check things out. People went out to the parking lot. I walked out with them, made sure everything was okay. You know, it's nothing really, nothing violent. It's just, you know, petty aggravation type stuff right now. Mm -hmm. But, you know, how it is when you feed wild animals, they, they start coming back. And if you don't feed them every time, then they get mean. Yep. So there's been people, and, you know, you hate to think of people that way, but. You just gotta keep your guard up when people are on them on those drugs, and they have to feed that that crave. Um, they get pretty violent sometimes. So, uh, just trying to keep an eye on everything. I mean, we we try to minister to them as much as we can, but uh, at some point you've got to realize the danger there. And uh, a lot of our people still think it. Is like it used to be when we were, you know, young. You leave your cars unlocked and purses in them, and everything would be fine. But it's not that world anymore. No, it's not quite like that anymore, is it? No, it's sad. I mean, it's going to keep getting worse until it gets better. And uh, it's either going to be a great revival happen and uh, big change, or God comes back and redeems His people. <laughs> yeah. One or the other. Uh, so yeah, the God side uh, did got to go to church. I got to listen to services and and participate and sing. I tell you, not being able to you know sing praise music corporately, uh, I miss that almost more than more than the preaching because I can listen to the sermons later and stuff. But being in there with everyone singing, um, praising God, that's that's the most. I think it's the most important thing or the most. Uh, the thing I miss the most when I'm able to be in there. Uh, reading the through the Bible in a year through through uh, through the ESV study Bible, playing on the Bible app, and uh, working my way through that uh, C.S. Lewis, the call to create on the Bible app as well. It's just a four day one, but I think I'm only getting two out of the four days. I got two more to knock out. I've been reading a lot. I just finished reading uh, Traveling Light by Max Lucado, uh, a really good book. And I've reread, um, I'm rereading Survivor, a novel of the coming collapse by Jim Rawls. I really like that. I think it's its best book, or it's the one I most. That one in Patriots, the original one, was probably number two. But I just the, it's like a, uh, it's an epic adventure for this one character in the book of traveling from Afghanistan through uh, Germany and France, England, then going boat across the Atlantic Ocean, going into um, South America, I can't remember which country, uh, and then riding horseback from this South American country all the way up to 
Arizona. <laughs> it's a it's an epic tale, and it's really uh, I mean really keeps you plugged in, and uh, I, I just enjoy that that book. It's one of my favorite by Jim Rawls. I probably need to have him on again. It's almost October. He usually has something new every October. We usually come mm-hmm. on every October. So I have to reach out to him and give him a call or text or something. We'll see if he's getting anything up. Uh, I've been uh, supporting Craig Sawyer. Um, Craig Saw, you know, I, I, a lot of you guys probably know Sawman. Uh, he's on um, Outdoor Channel and some different shows, and he's on with Gunny a lot of times on Gunny Time and. Um, He's a uh, ex special ops guy, and he's fighting uh, for to rid America of pedophilia. Um, these kids being taken and tortured and, and raped, and uh, child slavery. And he's got a group called Vets for Child Rescue dot org. And I heard about it probably three months ago, and tried to find out some more information and. Finally found out where it's at, and I started donating. So I'm, I'm a monthly contributor to try to help out that organization because I think it's something that as believers we ought to be supporting, trying to put a stop to people abusing children here in our country. It's just unbelievable. But um, if you guys are interested in that, I put a link here in the show notes, and it's just vets for like the number four, childrescue.org. And so... Uh, check it out. See if it's something you think is worthy of your your money. Um, I think trying to keep kids from being abused by sick, uh, spiritually depraved uh, people is something that's worthy of my money. Uh, on the gun side, uh, I got in the spikes tactical uh, barking spider today from a. Oh, look at that! Yeah, it's. Uh, everyone that I've, I've heard that that's got them says it's it really greatly improves on SBR, um, you know, rifles and SBR, pit, you know, or pistol uh, ARs. <clears throat> really helps with the the sound projecting it away from the shooter and other people on the firing line, things like that. So until I get to a suppressor in, that's I'll use that. <laughs> so I'll let y'all know how it works. Um, I'm, I don't think I'm going to get my uh, get a chance to paint it or what do you call it, dirt coat it before um, Recce Veteran 88 shoot coming up here in October, first week of October. So I'm probably just going to go ahead and configure it all and then bring it with me. And then I'll get back, strip it all down, and then dirt coat it. But uh, because I don't think I have time to cure because I only got like two weeks left of the the Duracoat colors haven't come in yet. I got the templates and um, I got all the equipment to do it with. I just don't have the, the Duracoat in. I think it takes like three weeks to harden all the way. Three weeks to a month, I think. So I'm just going to go ahead and assemble it the way I want it and then take it down there to the chute then come back and paint it up the way I want to paint it up. This so we got Tom just jumped in here with us. Tom? Yeah, it's Tom. Hey. Hey, Tom. So, um, we are in the middle of the show here, and we're going through our stuff up front, so we'll be with you in just a second. That's good. I'll, I'll call back at eight then. Sorry. I was just saying this was working. No, you're good. You're good. Yeah, you're good. We appreciate it. <laughs> uh, so, on the gun side, yeah, I got the uh, Franklin Armory's uh, binary Gen 3 trigger. It's supposed to be here Monday. So I'm going to have the, the binary trigger set up for it, the barking spider, and um, that's pretty much the gun side. Well, I ran off some poachers again we, over the Friday. We had people out here driving around, pulling up our, our, our farm lanes and looking around with their binoculars out of the trucks and stuff, <laughs> trying, to, trying to hunt from the trucks, man. It's just it's getting pathetic. Road hunters. Yeah. Hey, did you did you say you put a, you were putting a binary trigger in something? Yeah, that, I'm gonna put it in the uh, little uh, AR pistol build I'm working on. You you put the trigger into that fires when you release and pull. Yep, it's three oh. positions, so it, it you know it's safe and then it's uh, regular um, um, semi-auto, and then you right. put it in the third position and it fires and it fires again and release. And so oh. 
they hit them on sale this week on Devor. <laughs> did they really? How much? Well, three hundred and fifty. Really? Yeah, yeah. It's about. I, I see them. They were three ninety about that on sale on uh, on Franklin Armory's website. They had them on disc. They originally like four twenty nine or something. They marked mm-hmm. like three eighty nine, and then uh, Devor had them on there for three hundred and fifty. <sighs> I picked up one. Dude, I got to shoot that thing. Yep. So, I'm going to have to make a trip back down to Florida. Well, we're going to maybe we do some duck cutting when it gets. I don't know if duck cutting is going to come before Florida or not. Yeah, but you can't shoot when they are, though. Huh? You no, can't like shoot when. I can bring it. And you can see it and shoot it. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, that'd be fun, man. I'm sure somewhere we can shoot in Arkansas. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, might be able to shoot one of them. Are probably not legal though. <laughs> <laughs> Too many hunters around. <laughs> yeah, I just shoot down in, in in a thicket or something. Uh, so that's my guiding gun stuff. Uh, EDC, what you got? We you wearing EDC. Got my Glock 19 on me, and I even broke out tonight. Since in in um, respect for your puff sitting back here on the back of the desk. I broke mine out tonight. So yeah. that's, Can't see I got my, I got my little jewel with me tonight. You, what'd you put on yours? You got a eight and a half inch barrel. I got 10 inch barrel, 10 inch, 10 inch. Yep. It's just a little bit longer. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah. Oh, not see. bad. I, I got the, uh, hand, it's no big deal. I put that hardened arms scorpion upper on mine. Good and, uh, yeah. I, I like it. <laughs> Here's looking at you. Don't shoot. <laughs> People are all over the world flinching. <laughs> I know. <laughs> he, he, he pointed a gun at me. I like it though. Did I trigger you? <laughs> hey, did you put the, uh, did you put the folding stock on there yet? No, I I haven't had time. I've got I've got this to put on. Just came in. I mean, it like came in right before, literally, but right before I started working on the show. And then the AR folder I haven't put on yet because I haven't found my AR tool. I told you I lost it. I don't know. It's somewhere since we moved. I know I've lost track of it. So it's either in the safe. It's like the last place I haven't looked. The safe or my toolbox over in the over in the barn hey what did bark and spider run you if you don't mind me asking uh what was it 119 it was 119 oh i bought it off their site off spike's site did you yeah because i'm telling you look i want let you see the end of this see how mine is it's got the free float on it Mm -hmm. that thing would slide right in there man it would fill up that whole end on that yeah it looked good it would look far away from your hand too yeah, it does. <laughs> right now, it probably heats up your fingers pretty good, huh? It does. I actually have to shoot. I have to shoot that with uh, glove. On? Uh, yeah, I had to put a glove on. Usually, I mean, after you shoot a mag through it, if you if you pop another mag in it and start going at it again, yep, uh, it gets it gets a little warm. Yeah, that's why with puff puff gets really warm. Eight and a half inch barrel. You gotta make sure your hands back because it'll curl all the hairs up uh, up to past your wrist <laughs> mm-hmm. it throws out a big fireball i've got a little uh, angled foregrip on it, and it you you want to make sure your fingers are behind that grip because it'll it'll light them up. <laughs> uh, let's see so my edc is a uh, light lock 19 uh, gen 3 and as you were talking about it's pretty dusty i don't know if y'all can see the dust it gets in that rmr but it gets pretty dusty in there. When I carry it during the day, you can see dust usually accumulates down in the trigger in here. So, like every two or three days, I've got to clean it out. I have to wipe the lens off the RMR every every night when I get in, or it's just all fogged up, mm-hmm. like lint and dead skin kind of stuff. It's amazing how much dust and stuff them things pick up just carrying them. Yeah. Yeah, I carry. I've been carrying my Glock 30s when I mow and stuff because it just completely covers up my L, my RMR on that on the on the Glock 19. 
And then I'm carrying the Ruger SP-101 front pocket here. Pocket somewhere. Oh. Pocket. <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> Cargo pocket. I just moved it because it was uncomfortable. I carry it in a uh, little DeSantis. It's a 357 Magnum Ruger SP-101. Nice. It's got the laser grips on it, so it's just a point and shoot kind of a pistol, uh, defensive pistol, and that's my backup today. And let's see, that was it. And you're in theirs, and so Comedy I Corner, think. you might be a gun nut if if your girlfriend or wife is jealous of the time you spend with your guns. <laughs> that's true. In your case, duck hunting too, bro. If if your wish list on Midway USA totals up to the price of a new car, if that new car would be a Rolls Royce, <laughs> yeah. Um, if you're already thinking about the next gun while you're filling out the paperwork on the one <laughs> the one you're buying today, yeah, I, I do that all the time. Man. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. I'm like, let me go ahead and get this one. Ooh, hey, look, look at that. If the guy's Shiny. local gun shop send you Christmas and birthday cards. <laughs> that's your that's your gun dealer, ain't it? <laughs> Not hardly. He comes over for Christmas. He comes over on Chris, uh, for our Christmas parties. <laughs> there you go. If you own a gun you haven't shot yet. Uh, that's me. <laughs> it's right behind me. <laughs> oh, you ain't shot a little puff yet? No, I've, I've been putting parts on it. I haven't, I haven't shown oh, it. Yeah. I'm planning on dirt coating it. And I don't want to have to clean all that, that carbon stuff off. Right. So I, I was just going to strip it down. So, that, But now I'm this close to Iraqi veteran shoot. The uh, YouTubers uh, shoot. You're still going, right? I hope so. Uh, you better be going. <laughs> I need a video guy. If you're not going, yeah. I got to screw the kid or something. I know we got a we have a go live um that week at work so they they cancel vacations and everything else so I might it'll just depend on how it goes the first few days uh, all right let's see go ahead is it your turn right now no, uh, okay. I, I, I've lost where we're at too if um if the sound of full auto gunfire makes you feel all warm and fuzzy. <laughs> Yep. Let's see. If you have a room in your house dedicated to guns. Yep. <laughs> I'm in it. <laughs> right. Me too. I'm in here. Um, if you shook the present under the tree <laughs> and one fired a round out of it. <laughs> <laughs> that would be very safe. I've never had that happen. No. This is a Nerf gun or something like that. But <laughs> If you specify your favorite farm, if your will specifies your favorite farms to be buried with you, <laughs> that's nah, me. I'm gonna let my I'm gonna let my kids because they they're not gonna be any good after I'm gone. Nah. Uh, I just I I told my son-in-law not to let Woody sell mine for what I told her I paid for him. Yeah. <laughs> <Gotcha>. <laughs> if uh, the Gun Talk logo is burned into your computer monitor. I can relate to that. Yeah. If someone says to you, but what if you don't have your gun with you? And after 15 minutes, you still can't comprehend how that would be possible. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, if, if someone asks you how many guns you have and the answer begins with about, about 50 or so. <laughs> <laughs> you ever have anybody ask you that? All the time, I'm like, I don't know. That's what I say. Yeah, you know, um, they're like, "How many guys do you have?" I, I trade. Like, I can keep up. Bro. I'm like, I don't know. I got a few. Yeah. <clears throat> and I, and I was like, "You probably got a hundred guns." I'm like, nah, I ain't get that many guns. Nah. Oh, let me get. I wish I had that many, but I don't. Yeah, I probably trade it off. Yeah, when you make out your list, you're always like disappointed. You're like, man, I thought I had more than that. <laughs> <laughs> no. I forgot I traded that one. Uh, all right. So if you wonder why you must renew your CCW license every so many years, but your marriage license doesn't expire. <laughs> <laughs> you might be a gun nut. <laughs> I know, right? 
Uh, so uh, we did that one. Um, if you look at an ink blot test and your answer were was everything like an AR-15 sear bolt release from an AR or from a Ruger 1022 or a firing pin from an M1911, etc. <laughs> If it looks like a barking spider. <laughs> yeah. You know, that you carry a 45 caliber, 230 grain, jacketed hollow point federal had that premium hydro shock, but you don't know the color of your wife's eyes. <laughs> might be a good net. That's it. Um, <laughs> I like this one. If you've ever shot a hole in something by accident. And then the follow up. <laughs> if that something was a TV during a Hillary or Trump debate. <laughs> <laughs> he shot the witch oh did I say that line okay <laughs> hey I'm not gonna lie I've actually sat in front of the TV watching the outdoor channel with a new rifle with a scope on it or something and uh -huh. get a buck in the scope just to see how it's gonna look <laughs> <laughs> you made me snort <laughs> <laughs> all right Listener feedback. Let's uh, see. That one's for you, Doug. Yeah, this one came from uh, Josh. He had, he, you know, he had, uh, we read a, uh, an email he had sent to us last week. He had replied back. He said, uh, Doug, thank you all for the response and reading my email on the podcast. Uh, I would like to respond sooner, but I didn't realize you're e you emailed me back uh, until I had actually listened to the show. For some reason, Gmail thought, can you believe it thought I was spam? You believe that? God and guns, they had to be spam. I don't know, right? Um, I also appreciate what both of you, what both of you said. Uh, I was raised in a Christian home by two loving parents who tried their best to keep me on a straight and narrow. I do want to tell you that about three years ago, I, I reaffirmed myself to Christ and was baptized as an adult. The religion I grew up in baptized you as an infant and then confirmed you as a teenager. Mm. I wanted to reaccept Christ as an adult and make my own decision to accept him after years of wandering in darkness. Again, thank you and Troy for everything you both do and bring to the podcast. Sincerely, Josh. Well, thanks thank a lot. you, Josh. Appreciate the feedback. Uh, let's see, let me read this next one. Yeah, I'll read this next one. George says, Gentlemen, I'm finally catching up on episode um, podcast after being uh, after having been on a little bit of vacation vacation recently. I heard uh, your email where you person called you guys Mr. and then your last name after listening. You correct him by telling you to use your first name. I got it, got me laughing about the fact that I call everyone sir or ma'am. <laughs> they protest. I let them know calmly and gently, but with finality, that you will not be, uh, deprogram 13 years of Alabama living in just one visit. <laughs> <laughs> also, when it comes to Jake leaving this week and gun, sadly, the show is nearly unwatchable now. I'm trying my, my level best to give them a fair shake. And it reminds me that you, if you gentlemen ever left the Gotten Guns podcast, that would be devastating. So for what it's worth, I uh, love every episode I can get my ears on and cherish every show. Cherish every time you guys take the microphone, spread the word, and I share your show with every person I can. Well, that's that's awesome. Mm -hmm. If at all possible, uh, if it all possible, never leave. But if you have to, good luck in whatever comes to the future. I'm sorry I don't get to wa watch your live show all very often. I would love to be one of the many people that enjoy your show live, but as I think you guys can understand my little girl doesn't want to watch TV, a YouTube video, unless it features Elmo. We can bring Elmo in here. I got Elmo over there. <laughs> I know there's, I saw Elmo last week when the kids were moving their stuff around. Uh, so we can stick to playing with our books or whatever other digital, non-digital toys we have around. I remember, the, I remember those years of watching kid, kid shows, listening mm -hmm. to music, stepping on toys in the middle of the night. Oh, wiping up puke. Uh, that was just last week. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was the dog puke last week. Uh, we were a very non-screen family. That is to say that the television may be on in the background, but my daughter is routinely running around playing her kitchen or building blocks or dolls. Soon we will get her a cap gun off the mantle and put it in the holster I made to test. Good dad. <laughs> Good guy, George. 
But we go to restaurants. She's typically killing. We don't. Uh, we do not accept for on very rare occasions. Let her use something that has a screen on. And to close out this long email, which I apologize for you reading through all this. Uh, did I uh, just lost the thing? It jerked. Okay. Didn't no one honestly email you guys about what you were giving away? <laughs> yes, no one did, except for you, George. And it, it shipped today or yesterday. I forget what. Um, Congratulations. <laughs> so you, you won. I think we went through two or three shows. Nobody ever replies. So I guess nobody's out there listening. I, know, I see four people right now are listening. I listen to mm-hmm. show on delay, so typically don't email when you're offering these things to people in the e- email. But as long as we reach out to you, if you got anything, send it our way. Uh, by the way, gang, gun stickers I ordered from you guys recently got a lot of attention on the side of my toolbox at work. I uh, hope that was good attention. Keep up the great work, and remember, if you ever need uh, ever near northwest corner of Indiana, look me up and got a place for you to sleep if you need it. Your brother in Christ, George. Appreciate it, George. Uh, George and I have conversed on many occasions, and uh, glad to have him as a listener out there in the audience. All right. Yeah. Do you want to comment on that? No, I, I, I appreciate him listening, too. And yeah. uh, I don't know. I may, I may be in Indiana one day. You never know when you have to when we have to look old George up. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah, there was one trip I was supposed to be going up um, North Illinois, and I was going to swing through there. I was coming back from – we were going to come back from uh, Montana, and we were going to go down through Chicago that way. And – I decided to go the southern route because of things that were going on politically and and things like that. So I just made a, a decision to take the southern route. No, it didn't. I was going to go by and see George, but it didn't work out that way. Bible verse um, this week is coming from Psalms 127, uh, verses 1 through 5, the whole book of uh, whole, uh, Psalms 127. And unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is in vain that you rise up early and go to uh, go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toll, for he gives to his beloved sleep. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, the, womb, uh, the fruit of the womb a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the children of one's youth. Blessed is the man who fills his quiver with him. He shall not be put to shame when he speaks with his enemies in the gate. So there's a lot going on here. The first three verses are really, are, uh, yeah, first two verses uh, have meant a lot to me over the last few years. I, I've, I have trouble sleeping more than four or five hours a night, um, just from aches and pains of uh, all the injuries from football and weightlifting and farming and stuff that I've hurt my body over the years. It causes me, if I lay still for very long, it causes me a lot of pain. The Zija takes the edge off of it, but I just, it just causes me pain to, to sleep a long time. And the doctors and everybody tells you, you need to sleep at least eight hours a night to be able to lose weight. And and so I'll sleep like three or four hours and I get up for an hour. <laughs> but these Bible verses have meant a lot to me that we, we're to rest in God. And so... What, what's saying here, unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. So, you know, whatever we plan to do on our own, unless God is with us in that, unless we're you know, letting God lead us and whatever that project is, whether it's building a house, building a business, a marriage, whatever it is that we're trying to labor at, that we're trying to put together. If we're doing it outside God's will, it's not going to work. It's going to fall apart because God has a plan for us and it may not be what we think it ought to be. And a lot of times we'll jump the gun and we'll do what we think it ought to be. And God just let, lets it fall apart. And then when we turn to him, the, then he, and, and ask his wisdom after we ex- ignored his wisdom, then he can teach us, right? Then he can guide us. Then he can direct us. And I've done multitudes of times in my life and I catch myself all the time trying to get in front of God. It's just like a, you ever went walking with a little kid and they want to go walking in front of you all the time. And you're like, you don't know what's coming. There's, you know, there's danger. There's cars. There's, you know, the, you, you might fall off this path. They might run out in front of someone. You know that there's dangers. They don't know. And it's just the same way with God. He knows what's in front of us. He knows what's likely to happen. Or he knows what's going to happen. And if we go and get in front of God, we're going to get hurt. 
If we go and get in front of God, we're going to get lost and go the wrong way, right? We're going to get off track. We're going to get off the path that he has for us. Instead, we need to go with God, stay with him, and stay connected to him. Hold his hand just like a little child and let him guide us so that we don't get lost, so that we don't get hurt, so that we don't stumble and fall. And, um, you know, that's what verse 1 means to me. That it's vain to, to rise up early and go to uh, go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil. So we know that in this verse, we're talking about, we're not supposed to stress about, you know, if God's given us a task, given us a, a thing to do, we're to do it as best we can, but we're not to work for for financial gain exclusively. You know, we, we work to provide for our family and things like that. But we're not to be all the time rushing, 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 and not doing the things that God's calling us to. And so anyway, I hear, I see people post all the time on, on Instagram and all the time on Facebook and all the time on Twitter. Uh, they're insomnia, insomnia. Well, if you put your phone down, <laughs> you turn your computer off, and you turn off the television, and you get in a dark room, you're probably going to go to sleep. But if you're up looking at your phone until you lay down, you're probably not going to be. If you're worried about tomorrow, you're probably not going to be. So trust in God to, to, to take care of tomorrow. Trust tomorrow to him and go to sleep and rest, knowing that he's in charge and you're not. And no matter how much worry you have about what tomorrow holds or how much worry you have about what could happen, especially if you like watch the news that hypes up everything, uh, you know, don't, you know, you don't worry about tomorrow. You're, you know what the end plan is. If you read the Bible, you read back in the back in there, that revelations part, you know, what's going to happen. You know that the worst thing is going to happen. Uh, so if you know that, you know, don't fear it. Just know that God's in control and, and rest in that. And then, of course, children, uh, as we went back and I was talking about Craig Sawyer uh, in, the, in the organization he's working with, I think that that's a, a valuable thing that, you know, in the Bible, it calls for us as believers to do two things specifically, is to take care of the innocent, take care of the children, and to take care of widows and those that can't take care of themselves. <clears throat> specifically, it, it, says that we're to take care of them we're to take care of the innocent we're to take care of those that can't help themselves and so i think that you guys are you know look at that uh, the vets for um let me read the little uh, there vets for child rescue.org check that out and see if that's something that you want to get involved in but you know the scriptures clearly say that we're to to uh Take care of children, even if they're not our own, right? We're supposed to take care of children and, and those that can't help themselves and, and defend them. And then as, as your own children, you have to see them, <clears throat> that they're going to be going out into the world. And you're sending them out just like a, an archer sends out an arrow into the world. God has a purpose for them. And your your goal is to, or your job, is to get them prepared to go out and be that in that battle. Because every day... They're, they're going to be facing battle just like we do, as as they leave that leave your you know leave your bow and go out there. You need to have trained them, right? You need to have got them where they're on the straight and true that they'll go and fly straight and true. You need to prepare them uh, to be ready for the battle that's coming before them. And and God has blessed you with them for a purpose, not for your gain, but for their, for His gain, for for going out and and winning the world. Uh, for him, and so you need to give them a a purpose before they leave that before they leave that you know that bow. They need to have a purpose. You just don't shoot arrows off in the just in a different direction. They have a specific target, specific goal. If a child doesn't have a direction to go towards, you know they have certain gifts and abilities. You need to guide them in that direction the way God's gifted them, and make sure that they don't waste it on on things that aren't going to be useful. So. Again, that's, uh, that's Psalms 127, verses 1 through 5. Doug, you want anything to that? I was just going to say, you know, I got one of my daughters is fixing to have a baby, and she is stressing out constantly, you know, about money and this and that. And I told her, I said, look, I said, God's got a plan for you. You know, it doesn't matter. You just got to put your faith in it. It's, it's going to work out, and it will. I said, you're, you're going to be fine. I, she just she's my worry warden and i wish i could i wish i could teach her to you know just put her trust in god and and, and press on that's what you got to do 
Yeah, you can really stress out over things that you have no control over. I mean, you know, being financially uh, responsible is important. And, you know, we're called to be frugal and, and we're called to, you know, be uh, wise users of the resources God's given us. But on the other hand, if you're doing all you can do, and there's still a gap between what you've got and what you've got, <laughs> what you've got to come up with. Uh, we've, we've both talked about uh, time and time again, how God has met that need. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, and give it to God say, God, this is, we got more month and uh, expenses than we got money to spend. on. <laughs> so, you know, we're, we're going to need your help here. So, you know, those are just things that uh, need to be focusing on. All right. So we've got, uh, Brian is with us. I hear, I hear feedback. Is it? I hear somebody's got us in the background. All right. So we've got. Okay, I think Brian's got speakers on in the background, and he's got us on delay. So <laughs> Thomas is with us. I'm gonna bring Thomas up. Uh, so he's not muted. Thomas, you with us? Yep, you got me. Tom Barker. Tom Barker with Wingspan Solutions and let's see, Snake River, is that right? Yeah, Snake, Snake River Shooting Products. I'm I'm here representing Snake River. Snake River and Brian. <laughs> hey, there's Brian. Yep, here I am. Like it flag back of the mic. Give us your oh, uh, introduction because Casey didn't give me anything but Brian. So uh my name is Brian <laughs> Hobson. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like him. <laughs> He's left me hanging They're like Brian who? Brian Thompson. Well, I, I will tell you I've never done a podcast before, so I don't know if I sound all right or how this works. Hey, um, you sound fine to me. Okay. I think everything's yeah. working. We're good. Right. Uh my name is Brian Hobson. I'm with Mid America Munitions. Awesome. So uh, I'd asked Casey a while back um through Interior Alliance. If we had some, uh, I know that the interiors is full of ammunition manufacturers, and that uh, asking to, for you guys to come on. We've had requests from some li different listeners asking about, you know, we talk about guns all the time, but we never talk about bullets. And you know, like bullets are more important because there's so much different variety and things than than guns. Because you know, uh, and so we wanted to bring you guys on. Tell us about the different kinds of ammunition you've got. Tell us about, uh, you know, for hunting purposes or for uh, long distance shooting, things like that. You know, what kind of products there are out there that you make your products unique and are, are, are better than the other competitors. And we want to see uh, Tom and Brian fight it out about who's got the best team. <laughs> <laughs> never. We'll never fight it out. That, uh, truthfully though, guys, that's the beauty about the Alliance, you know, is yeah, yeah we have, uh, we have three different uh, bullet manufacturers. Now we got mid America, we got, uh, controlled chaos from reaper outdoors and we got team never quit ammunition and so those those three products uh, alone or three companies alone they all have very different products but um you know in the end they're all bullets but we don't fight about that we all promote each other's products so it's it's really kind of a nice uh, nice niche to to be in uh, unfortunately in the, today's market ammunition is not the greatest thing to be selling because <laughs> everybody loaded up on ammo before you know expecting the hillary era yeah, and uh, so now they're just kind of waiting to to finish training and finish blowing off everything that they loaded up with. But um, yeah, we have quite a bit of uh, phenomenal stuff, and I mean, it just depends on where you want to start with. Um, we could we could talk about all kinds of stuff. Sure, I'm gonna turn you up just a little bit, Tom, because I'm having trouble hearing you. Yeah, that's not your fault. And I'm gonna turn up Brian <laughs> a little bit. We do this on the fly. We're not professionals. So we worry we get paid for this job. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but that's uh, what I keep saying too. So it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> so where we're at is uh um uh, yeah, I, I I was just joking about you guys fighting it out, but I, I know that you guys have some unique ammunition. Tell us about uh Tom, tell us about the, the products that you're that you're representing here tonight. Uh what what kind of uh, features and things do you have that most of the rest of the market doesn't have? So we carry actually quite a few that, um, so let, let's start with uh, handgun ammunition and then this will kind of dovetail nicely after I go through some of my products into mid America. Okay. Um, so let's start with handgun ammunition. And so, uh, the team never quit a line of ammunition is, uh, the primary one we carry is frangible. Uh, and if you have any, you know, have heard of frangible, most people kind of have this theory about frangible and they don't really understand what it is, or if they do, it's old ideas. 
Uh, and it takes a lot of education on our part to get people to understand exactly what frangible does and what it's for. The rounds that we have are uh, built by Centerfire. Uh, we have two different rounds. We have uh, a training round and we have a hollow point round. The training round is about 21, 22 years old now. Nothing new about it in the industry at all. Uh, it started with Fletzy, the Federal Law Enforcement Training Center, wanting a uh, round to shoot steel with, that they could shoot steel safely. Uh, if anybody's ever shot steel here, which I'm sure all of us have, and I'm sure most of your listeners have, it is a fun activity, but it is not a safe activity when you're up close. Fletzy was doing a lot of, of shooting steel very close, and so they wanted something that wasn't getting uh, you know, fragments back at them. And so their requirement was the round had to break up to pieces smaller than 5% of the original mass. And so Centerfire had this phenomenal round. Uh, it's a centering process that they build this with. That's why it's center fire. Mm -hmm. But it's basically copper and tin powderized metal. And so if you think of a, of a room and you put basketballs in it, fill it up with basketballs, that's the copper pieces in that, in that room, right? And then you fill that with golf balls, that would be the tin. And then you pressurize it and heat treat it and it turns it into, uh, granted, it doesn't start the size of a room. I'm just giving you an example. Gotcha. Uh, you, you take all that powderized metal and you heat treat it and pressurize it and turn it into whatever shape you want. And they made a bullet shape with it. And so when it hits something harder than itself, at speed, it basically turns right back to powder. So you can literally shoot steel. I mean, I've done it with my muzzle almost touching the steel, and I don't recommend doing that, but mm -hmm. you can shoot steel from about three inches away, and you get nothing back at you. And if you feel anything, it feels like hot sand hitting you on the neck. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's very effective for training. That round is extremely effective for training and shooting steel up close. The, the idea behind it, though, is that most people don't shoot steel that way, and so it takes a lot to get them to understand what they can do in training right. and the, the reaction times that are different when you're shooting paper and you're doing <coughs> – say, say you want to clear your house or you want to train to clear a room and you're shooting paper. You're very concerned about where that round goes, and in reality, your reaction time should be hit and move. You're waiting for the reaction of the target. and So when you hear that sound from steel, it's phenomenal. You know you hit it. Mm -hmm. You might not have hit it exactly where you wanted to, but you know you hit it. And so that's the beauty of shooting steel and shooting steel close. You get that instantaneous reaction and sound. And your targets actually stay longer. You're not changing out paper targets all the time, although you can do paper targets on top of them. But, you know, for the most part, there, there's a lot of benefits to it. So that's the training round. Uh, if you shoot it on anything else, if you shoot it against people or, you know, animals or whatever, basically acts, as, acts just like a full metal jacket. It penetrates... There's no, I mean, it, it just zings right through walls. It, it, there's, there's no stopping it, really. It is a little bit lighter, and if it hits something hard, it starts to break up. But what we did, uh, what Cinefire did, and what Mark Lissettrell wanted to start with is he wanted a round that he could train with and actually was very effective on uh, a self-defense side as well. And so Cinefire put a hollow point in this round, and this is our hollow point, self-defense hollow point rounds. And now that same round, same composition, uh, same round but with a hollow point. When it hits soft tissue, to the depth of that hollow point, it fractures apart, and it'll fill a cavitation chamber up with shrapnels, 8 to 10 little chunks of shrapnel, and then the rest of the mass, 50% of the mass of the bullet, will go 14 to 18 inches into, uh, into the body. Wow. When you look at gel and you look at self-defense rounds, any self-defense round on the market, you're really looking for penetration and cavitation. The cavitation by most of them is done by expansion of petals, you know, so you see the hollow points and the expansion of those petals, and it drags more resistance through the body or through the, through the soft tissue, creating more cavitation, more path. Now with ours, it actually puts shrapnel in that path and leaves shrapnel there, and then the rest of the mass will do 14 to 18 inches. So a very, very effective self-defense round. A secondary benefit of that is that if you miss, which truthfully most people do, and you know, in high stress situations, more than likely you're going to miss your first round. Hopefully you don't, but if you miss and it hits something hard, cinder block, mm -hmm. street, pavement, anything like that, it goes right back into powder. So if you think of any shooting situation that's happened in the last 10 years, where have they been? Schools, banks, movie theaters, mm -hmm. you know, cops outside. If they were carrying this ammo, those 80 rounds, 80, 90 rounds that you never hear accounted for, those would be gone into, into uh, powder, basically, if it hits something hard. Now, this does not you know, preclude the fact that if you miss and hit somebody else, yes, you're going to do some damage to that person. But it is one of the most effective self-defense and safety side of the house rounds that I've ever, I've ever seen. And then the, the 
a third bonus, and I always use la this last, is our rounds are about five to ten dollars cheaper per twenty than any top of the end, uh, top of the line self defense round. So, oh. three very phenomenal points on on that ammunition, and that's the team never quit hollow point um, self defense round. So, I, I remember it um, up in Montana. I was watching them. I didn't get. I didn't shoot the the defensive ammo, uh, the training ammo, but I saw him standing like four inches away from the steel plate shooting it, and my teeth were gritted because I was like, oh, gosh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I could not stand that close because <laughs> I've shot steel and had it bounce, you know, had, had bullets bounce back and, and jackets hit me in the leg and hit me in the shoulder stuff from 30 feet back. And yeah. I'm sitting there watching them shoot four or five inches off that plate, and that, that powder just blasted off to the side. So I'm like, ooh. It, you know, you can talk about it all day. I can tell people all day, hey, you can shoot steel from three inches away, and they will not believe you until they do it themselves. Yeah. You know, no matter what. And I'm like, like it's the safest thing in the world. I'll take my kid up there, my 11-year-old boy with me, and walk up uh, on the steel with him and shooting. Yeah. And it's phenomenal. It's great for training for the kids, too, because you're not so worried about stuff coming back at them. And they, you can train them a little bit easier. And it's, you know, granted, it's still shooting, but it's it's a phenomenal way to train. So, uh, And so that comes in uh, – most of the major calibers, so you're looking at 380, 38, 9, 45, 40, 10, uh, all those calibers it comes in. Uh, it also comes in a 223 round, but the 223, the, the rifle rounds are not hollow points. Um, so they're a little bit different. They're like the basic training round. Uh, they still are very effective, uh, but we have 223 and uh, 300 blackout now in frangible rounds. And I know Mid America has a frangible as well. So how close can you get with those rifles? Is it the same kind of distance? Or you got to be further back, surely. Uh, so with we have two different grains on the two two three. Uh, the forty five grain acts basically like a full metal jacket, so you can still shoot very close to steel, but you're going to damage your steel and okay. it's just flat out. It's too fast. Yeah. Uh, but a very effective hunting round, uh, surprisingly. A lot of hog hunters down in Texas are using it. Uh, and then the 55 grain is really made for shooting steel up close. So if you, if you look at a lot of the videos of team never quit uh, videos on YouTube and you see people shooting steel up close, they're using the 55 grain. You can okay. use the 45, but you're going to get a little bit more back at you. What kind of velocity are we talking about with these training rounds? Are they, got, they, they're not like full speed. No, they're full speed. You got it. Uh, so most of them are pretty on par with what you're getting. Um, I'd have to I'd have to pull the stats up, but they're they're almost just like a FMJ, just moving about as fast. The one that's moving slower is the 55 grain, and uh, I'd have to pull up the the velocities for you, which I can in just a second. But that's right. um, yeah, it's it that one moves a little slower. So your your point of aim, point of impact, out the distance is a little different. But the the 45 grain is is right on par with most of your other uh, ammo that's out there. So very effective. I'm sorry. These questions just pop up in my mind as you're talking. Oh, please. The the when you sh what about the short the SBRs or the AR pistols? Are they, are they cycling as well? Is they cycle just as well? And those is a full length barrel rifle. Absolutely. Yep. We we've been shooting them through all different platforms, all different kinds of stuff. Uh, I had a guy recently that was jamming them, and it depends on the on the gun sometimes. And I I can't say that all. Uh, he had a scar, and it was shoving the bullet into the in, back into the into the casing. And sometimes, you know, that's just because it's got a hard hit. It's got a really hard spring, heavy spring, mm -hmm. and maybe there's something different on the feed ramp. But um, you know, with that frangible round, it's hard to crimp. Uh, if you crimp them, you break them. So sometimes that that uh, there's not a lot of resistance there. I've never seen that. I've never personally seen that. I've probably shot. I don't know, seven, 8,000 rounds of this stuff just on different timing, uh, you know, through the, the last two years, uh, having other people shoot it myself and, you know, doing other things. But uh, I've never seen that happen. But um, obviously it does. And it's one of those things that you got, you know, if your gun doesn't like it, heck, your gun might not like some other type of ammo. So it's it's just, yeah. you know, it is what it is. But uh, for the most part, there is no issue. Even even suppressed, no issue with it. It's It's phenomenal. That's so what, that's what I carry. I carry the team never quit in my 45s. That's what I yeah. have. Yeah. That's the only thing I carry anymore is uh, nine. You know, the team never quit all over the place. I love it. <laughs> Rands are uh... like, yeah, I'll get you to change. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I've had a chance to be able to shoot some of team never quits ammo. And it, it is, it's really good ammo. You know, um, been able to sh watch Tom shoot some up close and, I'll admit it made me cringe, yeah. but you know, it, it's good. All frangibles aren't made the same. Right. Um, and that's something where he said he's been able to use that frangible for a couple of decades. And there's a reason why, 
you know, there's different companies out there that make different types of frangibles and you got to stick with what's good. So we had, uh, we had some guys shooting frangible down in, uh, uh, we had Minden, uh, not Minden, I'm sorry, the Hub, Hub Fest down in Arizona just last month, and they were shooting um, a different type of frangible on the range, and it was coming back at them. Uh, mm -hmm. And it, granted, it's not like chunks of, of uh, you know, copper, mm -hmm. but it's, uh, or chunks of the, uh, you know, full metal jacket, but still a lot of chunks were coming back. And again, center fires process is, I mean, 22 years old, they know what they're doing. So yeah, it's, it's pretty phenomenal stuff. Yeah, I can remember the first time I had, uh, uh, what is it, the um, the little, uh, I'm to look at this patch here is what I'm trying to think of. It always reminds me of the first time I saw one of these uh, pushing up daisies. Uh, it's a... <laughs> well, yeah. Yes, yes. When you have one of those little daisies come flying back at you pretty quick and you're having to dodge them. <laughs> Yep, and I I've just funny of that. <laughs> I think of it, man. I saw one spinning at me. It's like, whoa! <laughs> yeah, but you no, know, uh, that, that's one of the things about the steel plates. A lot of people have been buying steel, but they've not. They've been shooting regular ammo. I see videos, these YouTube yep. videos, and people are standing ten feet away shooting regular ammunition. No, I do that. Hitting at the ground at <laughs> their feet, they're not even noticing it. You know, it's like. Yeah. You're hitting right back at your feet. I'm like, gosh, you guys are stupid. <laughs> well, the other thing too, when you, when you really think about steel, it's not cheap to buy. And mm -hmm. so you want to keep that life of that steel. You want to last as long as you possibly can. So shoot stuff that's decent with it or shoot from a distance that is not really damaging it is exactly. That's really key. So, um, you know, steel does last for a while, but I've, you know, I was, I was shooting uh, 45 grain, the faster uh, centerfire frangible, Team Never Quit 223. Um, at SHOT Show two years ago, we had a plate that was moving back and forth out of the range. Mm -hmm. And um, we probably shot about 1,000 rounds at that plate. And granted, it was, it was very thin. It was probably an eighth of an inch. It wasn't made for, you know, not a big piece of AR-500. It was just made for distance shooting. And it took 1,000 rounds before we went through that. And I, we were shooting anywhere from five to maybe 15 feet away. And, but nothing ever came back. But we finally penetrated the plate. With AR? Yeah. With yeah. Rifle? Yeah, with the, yeah, with rifle. Wow. But again, it was a 45 grain. And it took about 1,000 rounds before we went through an eighth of an inch of steel. So it was mm -hmm. pretty good. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's crazy. All right. So is, so we got your you got the pistol. You got the frangible. We've covered. Yep. Your, what else have we got? So uh, on the hunting side, and uh, we have our newest line, and we, it's been around for a while, so I shouldn't say it's our newest. Uh, our maker, uh, maker bullets for our hunting line. Um, <clears throat> if if you've ever gone online and looked at maker bullets, again, it's all copper. So we don't carry any leaded uh, rounds from Team Never Quit, and even even I'll talk about the uh, the Control Chaos as well. But on the Team Never Quit side, it's all copper or copper and ten. Mm -hmm. uh, and so our hunting line is uh, from the bullets from Maker, and it's a CNC machined uh, bullet. And so he precisely turns every bullet in a CNC machine, and it's made so that the the pedals on it look exactly like that pushing up daisies, but it's all copper. Wow. And he has a hundred percent retention on all his bullets. That's what you know. Now, primarily, you're going to get a hundred percent. I can't say that something's going to not flag off or go crazy, but uh, the the bullets are just absolutely beautiful when they come out. They look like those those flowers uh, yeah. and very effective. We have them also in uh, solid copper uh, for our, our self-defense line as well, that it's just solid copper, but the hunting line is phenomenal. So you're looking at uh, 223, 308, uh, 300 blackout, um, uh, just all very phenomenal, uh, very nice bullets. Uh, they their, their expansion is fantastic, and the subsonic ones are just amazing as well. He has a 300 a blackout subsonic that flowers out just like that. It's just phenomenal. Great, great round. So, uh, do you sell the bullets as well, or do you sell the manufacturing, uh, the ammunition complete? We do both. So, TNQ has the bullets as the ammunition complete, and then I also uh, carry Maker bullets as well. So, that's that's something that uh, we carry. That's something you can buy through Interiors. Is, is it Wingspan? Yep. Is that how it's sold? Wingspan through? Outfitters. Yeah, Wingspan okay. Outfitters. Okay, so I'm trying to remember to put all these links in the show notes as I'm going through here, so people yeah, yeah. It, they'll, they'll have the links in here. And so, wingspan will be for uh, those bullets. That uh, is, 
are you, what other are you carrying Brian's ammunition as well through Wingspan, or is it carried directly from Brian? And how's that? Work? No, that's directly from Brian. Yeah, absolutely. So that's uh, one of the things, and we can talk about that when when Brian gets on. Yeah. But that stuff is such a good price. I can't carry it and make any money on it. So that it's they've got it. It's just phenomenal pricing, and it's they're doing a great job with the ammo, and it shoots well. I've shot a bunch of it. We shot some up at the uh, at the uh, event in Montana that we did, and I, I tell you, it's it's fantastic stuff. I really like it. But um, before we get to him, I just want to really touch quickly on uh, Control Chaos uh, yeah. Reaper Outdoors. So the difference between uh, so you have Team Never Quit, which is primarily frangible, mm -hmm. uh, and then you have their hunting line, which is solid copper, which uh, retains its expansive rounds, so they expand, and then you have the uh, the Reaper Outdoors Control Chaos. They have a couple lines, uh, specifically Control Chaos, 223, 308, uh, 300 win, I believe. Um, but the, all those rounds are fragmentable. And so what they do when they hit, they're CNC brass, mm -hmm. uh, brass bullets. And when they hit, they basically explode apart. Um, not the whole bullet, but, you know, again, to the depth of the hollow point, it's going to basically come apart in fragments and you know destroy anything it's touching and so when you think about the, the frangible round hitting soft tissue the brass round does the same thing but it's bigger chunks mm -hmm. and if you ever watch a video of ron shooting or any of the uh um, the rounds that he does things just explode he loves taking watermelons and melons out onto the range because they just absolutely explode uh, when they get hit uh, fantastic round, fantastic hunting round. Again, all brass, no lead. So that's a, that's another good solution for you. Well, uh, that spawns more questions. As a reader, <laughs> I'm thinking about these things. So when you when you so can you crimp these brass and crimp these uh, the the copper loads? Uh, yes. Without problem. You were talking about the fragmenting. Uh, you have to be careful that you probably don't sell those uh, frangible bullets by themselves because of the crimp. No, you, you can. I don't typically sell them, but Centerfire does sell them. You just got to be careful when you load them that you don't crack them. Now right. that's the frangible bullet. And that's the, gotcha. you know, so when you start talking about all these F words, it's crazy. So frangible and fragmentable are different. Right. And I have to, I have to coach my sales staff on this constantly and tell them, uh, make sure you're very, being very you know precise about what you're saying okay. the fragmentable rounds the uh the solid brass it is solid cnc brass so it's set from solid brass stock and they cnc wow. machine it and so it fragments apart it explodes apart right. and you can crimp that all day long there's no issue it's brass it's hard um okay. and then the maker uh bullets the solid copper cnc it's the same thing very hard you can crimp them no problems um, the only thing you want to be careful about is on the frangible rounds, any frangible round, because it's made to like turn back into powder. You want to be careful about crimping those and, uh, you know, what you can and can't do with them. So you so, better off with pistol calibers than that and supposed to rifle. You probably uh, rifle. I, I think unless you really know what you're doing, you have a really good machine to load. I would suggest just buying them. Uh, yeah. That's just my suggestion and I'm not a loader, but uh, that's what I would suggest. I know people that do buy them and load them, but I would, I would just buy them. <laughs> it's just easier for me to buy them. I, I, just, I got into reloading about a year ago, a year and a half ago, and I'm just eating yeah. it now. So I just I, I bought a Dylan. I got, well, I traded for a Dylan, a uh, local guy here, and then this, I kept buying and kept buying, and now I'm up loading about seven calibers now. And I, just, yeah. I just really enjoy it. It's just yeah, it's nice, relaxing, and something to do in the wintertime, and you sit inside the house and you drink your coffee and you – reload ammo but um nice. Nice. But i was just that, that spawned those questions for me what about um now on these the brass and the copper rounds are they going to be a longer bullet to retain the same weight or are they close yes. enough yeah they're a little uh they're they're a little long when um when uh, brian comes on to talk about mid-america i'll pop out and i'll grab a couple of the uh, bullets from maker just to show you the difference um, and it doesn't really matter so much until you get into the subsonic. And, uh, mm -hmm. when you start talking about the subsonic 300 blackout, right. uh, the two, I gotta think of the grain weight that the big, the really big one, I'll bring one in, but it is super long. And so you're not talking about a lot of powder left, a lot of room right. left for the powder in that case, wondering. but, uh, but they are, again, he, the nice thing about what he can do, uh, Paul Hendricks at maker is he CNCs those. And if he doesn't like it, if it's not working, he just changes the program and he, pumps them out you know he'll pump out three and then he'll check it and making sure it's working and right. then as long as it's working that's what he starts cutting them to so his ability to tailor 
uh, the round to someone's specific needs. Mm -hmm. Phenomenal. Very, very, very simply for very simple for him to do. So he would have like a, uh, some kind of interface where if you were trying to load up a certain bullet of his, you could say, Hey, how many grains am I going to need of this to be operating this? Yes. With the pressure. Cause I mean, there's, there's probably not, I, I can look at my reloading manuals and I'm pretty sure there's not any of those bullets listed in there for the bullet weights and all that for, so we're going to get those calculations probably from him. then if we just going to do that. Um, probably, I think they're pretty close though, to the typical weight, just, uh, to the weight. just a little bit like yeah, a little bit off, but the length is going to be a little different, but yeah, I don't, so I mean, I, I, I'm guessing at some of this, I don't, I don't want to get out of my depth of my knowledge of freeloading. So I don't, <laughs> don't want to show my ignorance. There, but That's fine. I, I don't think it's as complicated as, um, you know, initially when you start thinking about it, I don't think it's as bad as uh, what you think, but okay. he's done, um, he's done specific loads for law enforcement. Uh, you know, they, they say, Hey, I want a 308 that will only penetrate six inches. And he's like, easy. It's not a problem. Uh, you know, he just puts the right grain weight on it. And he cuts the, the leaves to actually, you know, expand where mm -hmm. he wants them to done. And it's very simple. And, uh, so he can get that precise. Cool. So it's pretty nice. Did did you say you had shot some hogs and stuff with the uh, the team Never Quit hunting ammo? Yeah. So if you look into um, Texas Hog Hunters Association, uh, they one of the guys down there is a big fan of ours, and they did a bunch of testing with the um, uh, the T and Q frangible, and it's it's does some massive devastation to hogs. Um, you know, it when it when it hits, it breaks and tumbles, and so it's. Uh, it's a fairly decent round for hunting, uh, you know, small game, I would say. And I know the guys at Centerfire, they hunt whitetail with it, the 223, but I, I'm a little hesitant to hunt whitetail with the 223. Uh, but that's just me. You know, I know they, you know, you good placement on any round, it, you're going to be able to take it out. But I'd rather have a little bit heavier punch on the, some of the whitetail around here. So, what green I live, are in there? I, I, live down, I live down in Georgia, and we have a lot of hogs down here. <clears throat> yeah. So, I'm going to have to get some of it and try it down here and see how yeah. it works. There's a lot of guys uh, doing the the heli – well, not a lot. I, I know we have one company that's a helicopter a company that takes guys out, and they use that round specifically because there's nothing coming back of the helicopter. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really nice. But, um, yeah, there are guys using it constantly down there, so it's it's nice. And it's lead free, so it, it makes a big difference, you know. When you start thinking, I'm not, I'm not a huge tree hugger, but it makes a big difference. Why throw lead down range when you can throw just straight copper, and it's not going to be a big, a big issue. You know? Yeah. Yeah, the slave states, you know, they might not approve of you shooting lead anymore. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it anyway, it's just California, man. It's just California that doesn't like lead. <laughs> Massachusetts, uh, Maryland, uh, uh, you know. Yeah, guys. absolutely. All right, so. With you, all those guys under the bus. All right, yeah, Brian. absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, you have the floor. Can Brian hear us? Yeah, yeah, I can. Uh, you were cutting out a little bit. Sorry. Um, I, I'll tell you, I like the idea of being able to shoot a solid copper projectile versus a jacketed round. Um, you know, something about a CNC projectile, you know, it's going to be consistent. You know, it's going to be solid all the way through. There's no air bubbles where that lead was put inside that copper jacket and it's going to be accurate. Um, you know, there's, there's a reason why they load those, those solid copper projectiles. And there's a reason why they, they cost a little bit more than what a, a full metal jacket round would be. And there's a lot more you can do with them. Yeah. Um, so they're doing some good work over there. Team never quit. You know, I'm impressed with what they do. I'm glad to be a part of the Alliance and um, to be able to know those guys. Um, but just kind of talking a little bit about what we do uh, here at mid America. We, we are able to keep our prices down a lot lower than a lot of other people. And the reason is um, we, we've gone through a strenuous process of making things extremely efficient. We've trained uh, uh, several guys here that are extremely good at what they do. We, we've tested about every bullet across the market and in the United States to be able to finally settle on the right ones that meet our business model. Um, what we offer here, we do a lot of 300 blackout. We offer 300 blackout and different grain weights, everything from a subsonic round uh, to just a plinking round. We have a couple of different styles of plinking rounds and different, you know, depending on what somebody wants to spend, it's something a little bit more expensive, all the way down to something that somebody can just go and shoot full auto and, and not have to worry about it, not have to worry about how much money they're throwing down range. 
we we offer some some rounds that are good for hunting. I had a guy send us a, vi uh, a couple of pictures of him a little bit ago where he laid down a hog. Uh, 275 pounds is what it weighed out at. He used one of our 110 grain uh, blackout rounds. It's a Varmageddon round that we load. It's a black tip polymer. Whenever it hits, that tip explodes. Really, really good expansion. We have, you know, we test our rounds consistently all the time when we're loading. We, we make sure that our grain weights are fine-tuned for every lot that we're running. It's just a constant time of testing, testing, testing. And it sounds like fun. I mean, we get to go out there, shoot bullets, but whenever you're sitting there taking data down, data down, making sure the pressures are where they need to stay at, checking your depths, checking the crimp, checking your primer depth, checking bullet weights versus powder drops, uh, the pressure of the case. It, it it's a it's a job and we love it i mean we love what we do <laughs> cool so what all kinds of calibers and all kinds i mean different brand and uh, different tell us about your variety of calibers your handgun rifle calibers uh do you do shotgun as well or is just oh uh, we don't do shotgun uh the main thing that we do right now is 300 blackout like i was saying but we okay. also do 556 five, uh, and a couple different calibers. We use once fired military brass on both of those. Like Lake City type brass? or Lake City type brass. And we wash, dry it, clean it, polish it out. And we have a pressure system and put it through all different types of checks along the ways. Um, so whenever our brass is done, even though it's once fired brass, uh, it's about as good, if not better, than most other factory rounds off the shelf that you can go and buy. Um, I would put it up against anyone's out there just about that you can go into Walmart or Academy and, and you know, purchase. Uh, we also do 9, 40, and 45. And we are bringing on a new line of 6.5 Creedmoor and 308 to the market. Oh, and cool. those ought to be available pretty soon. Good deal. Yeah, 6.5 Creedmoor, is, uh, everybody seems to be getting on that bandwagon now. I've been looking at them. I'm, I'm trying to find out, figure out which platform I want to run. <laughs> I mean, everybody's got their their idea about which one's best and uh, uh that's probably the next caliber i'm going to jump to just because I, I hear so many good uh, reports about it well we've bought a couple of uh cheap cheap rifles here that we're doing a budget build with on 6.5 Creedmoor, mm -hmm. just to play around with see how they do and uh me and ray down here at mid-america we're able to stretch them out to 1250 yards and well wow. we ran out of room <laughs> So I, I like 6.5. Six 6.5 six is a great round. Yeah. Uh, one of the reasons, you know, why we're going to bring it on here pretty soon is uh, just the popularity, the gaining popularity of it. People seem to like that round a lot. And we like it a lot down there. Yeah. So um, what, what kind of um, – you said you have 9.40 and uh, 45, and you've got uh, – you're, you're bringing 6.5 pretty soon. And what was the other caliber? Uh, 308. 308. Now, is it going to be like a, is it going to be a hunting round? Is it going to be just a, a, a range round? Or what kind of round is it going to be? You're going to have multiple different? We're going to have multiple different rounds in those. We're doing all of our testing right now. Um, in our 308 and our 6.5 Creedmoor, what we're going to have is a, a hunting round along with a plinking round to go with it. So a guy can go outside in his rifle, same grain weight he can go out and hunt with. Uh, that way, you know, it's across the board. He doesn't have to do any changes to his optics or anything like that. Uh, Creedmoor is going to be the same way, but we're also going to offer a solid copper round in that one. Oh, cool. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be nice. Yeah. I've just, I just found, uh, I've, I've laid out my thousand yard range here on the farm. I finally found a location where I've got enough backstop that I can throw it, put in a thousand yard range and you say now 1200. So I'm like. I don't think I get another 200 yards. <laughs> Just push another the farm back a little further, Troy. Push it back a little further. <laughs> I can't shoot over the road. See, that's trouble. If I can shoot over the road, I got a 1.7 miles from one end of the farm to the other, but I got a road right in the middle of it. So it's, it's like, it's like buying a safe, Troy. You know, once you buy it, you're out of space. <laughs> you know, <bigger>. <laughs> <laughs> I need to move out west where you guys are at, where I can you know shoot two, three miles and not see my. Uh, hey, Brian, what you what you call your hunting ammo? Varmageddon? It's a Varmageddon. We use Nosler Varmageddon projectiles. <laughs> and they are great. They're... <laughs> I actually have one right here. Unlike um, to... I, 
Can you see that? <laughs> Let's see here. You see how it's got that black tip on it? There you go. Yeah. So yeah, that's a that's a great little round right there. Um, it has a polymer tip on it, so whatever it hits, as it gets pushed to the point, which just explodes that end. Um, you know, like I was saying, a guy just recently shot a 275 pound hog with it. Uh, one shot, and the thing he said dropped about five yards out. Uh, pretty good. <laughs> yeah. I got some reason here. Tom is muted. There he goes. And How about that? I'm sorry about that, Tom. No, it's all right. You let Brian have the floor on you. No, it's totally fine. I'm glad <laughs> yeah, to mute you. <laughs> we, cut him, we cut him off. He couldn't talk at all. So, a good deal. So, tell us, Brian, where, your website, where can they buy this at? Give me um, Our website is midamericamunitions.com. Mid uh, you can visit our website and check that out. We have a Facebook page uh, that also has a lot of things listed on it there. You can see some more pictures of what we do on a daily basis along with, uh, you know, maybe some, some stuff that customers have posted. Be able to see more reviews and everything of what the customers are actually using it for. Cool. So I'm going, if, to, get, I'm going to get some of those rounds because I'm, I'm going to get drawn. I, I get drawn about every other year. Um, we call it a pig killing over on one of the islands on the Barrier Islands on the, the coast of Georgia. And uh, you got to get drawn for it. And it's just, we, we go over there, the game orders take us around, drop us off, and our job is to kill pigs. They don't care if they're that big or 250 pounds. They want them dead. And uh, so I'm always looking at different kind of ammo to take over here that I can sling. Because I, I started taking my AR, and that's all I kill them with now. Yeah, yeah. Well, another round a lot of guys are using for, for hogs and deer over here is our 135 grain. I've got one of those here, too. I don't know if you can see the tip on that. You see how, can you guys see that at all? It's got almost like a, a Phillips head screwdriver notch tip on it. Um, and the reason why it's cut like that, it's got those notches in there so that whenever it hits, it explodes apart and flowers out like that. So whenever it mushrooms, it, it leaves a pretty large cavity. Um, we've done a lot of whitetail hunting with that up here, and it's it lays them down. Cool deal. All right. So Tom went and found some bullets, right? Yeah, I did actually. So um, hopefully that you can see this as, as easy as yeah. Brian. So that is the T-Rex, which is a tipped rapid expansion bullet. That's what's T-Rex. The same thing Brian was saying, that tip actually helps it expand a little bit. Right. A, lot of, a lot of discussion on whether that actually helps the uh, ballistics or not. But regardless, it, it is a little solid tip, and so nothing gets in there, and it actually it expands cool. really nice. I don't know if you can see the cuts in the side. <laughs> Probably not. Yep. But there's little cuts in the side of that bullet, and that's no, that's what the Paul does. Yep. And so that's that is a um, what grain weight is that? That one is a 125 grain, 300 blackout, T Rex. And then it's 200 grain. Yeah. Like I said, it's gonna fill that case up. Right. But you're going subsonic, obviously, with that. Right. And he has tipped and not and not. So this is a Rex, a rapid expansion bullet, and you can get it in a T Rex, but it has the same kind of cuts along the side, and so those cuts make it just flower out really beautifully. And truthfully, I keep telling him he needs to get a bunch of these and make a work of art with it, and have some have somebody actually, uh, you know, do something like pushing up daisies or something. You can find a tree hugger. <laughs> yeah, that's our <laughs> nine mil. Solid copper, same thing, CNC. And again, I don't know if you can see the cuts, but that's yeah. it. It does the same exact thing. It's beautiful round. What cal? Now, is that 115 or? Uh, you know what? It is 115 grain. Good guess, man. That was awesome. It was small, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this one is actually uh, a five leaf. And the new one we have coming out is with the new. Um, it's the the steel and uh, steel and aluminum case. You know the the steel main. This is a brass one, but they have the steel case up front and the aluminum on the bottom. And you can re you can reload those things forever. They don't ever expand. They don't. You don't have to trim them. Nothing. They actually maker took that case and they shot it for eight hours straight. Shot it, reloaded. Shot it, reloaded. Shot it, reloaded. Never changed it. Never trimmed it. Never did anything. Just straight out reloaded it and. They did it for eight hours, so they kind of proved that wow. it actually works. 
Uh, but the new one, the new, uh, the new solid copper that we have coming out will be that that casing, and then it has three leaves instead of five, and it actually makes a bigger cavitation chamber. And I'll, I'll send you some pictures, uh, Troy. Sure. And then the one that I really like, which I really have a hard time getting a hold of. <laughs> yeah. That is a twelve gauge slug. Yeah. And if you can see it, solid copper, same yeah. cuts, same company. <laughs> This is a home defense round like nobody's business. Yeah. This thing will go through a body. It penetrates a body, and it'll stop in one layer of drywall. So as soon as it penetrates, it's done. It, it's let out all of its, uh, its power. The first time I shot this round into a gel block, we couldn't find the round in the gel block. We were looking all over. It wasn't in the block. It didn't penetrate. We're like, what the heck happened to this thing? And we slow, we had Luckily, we had us on slow-mo on the video. And you could see the round go in, and it come it came right back out. We found it twelve feet away from the the gel block. Wow! <laughs> it came I out, saw that video. It came out the cavitation chamber and <laughs> just we spit it right back out. I'm like, oh my gosh! Amazing, amazing round. And the problem is, I'd love to sell these, and I bet you I could sell them all day long. I can't get them. <laughs> oh. <laughs> God, come on, man! These are awesome. But there you go. Yeah, you need to make a, a was it a buck and what is it called the a slug and a ball. What is it? The, the one with the, the buckshot and then a slug together. There's yeah. some perfectly perfectly machined round. <laughs> awesome. Double up buck, like three of those, and then with a slug with it. The slug behind it, slug yeah. backing it up. <laughs> yeah. That would be cool. Be very nice. Be very nice. Yeah. I've got a depraved mind. Okay, so. <laughs> 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 All right. So, Tom. Plug yeah. uh, Snake River uh, website or Wingspan, whichever way you're going to run this through. And we'll So my website, wingspanoutfitters.com. And so right now, um, you know, to plug all those rounds, got a sale going on for Control Chaos. Um, got a sale going on for it's uh, with Honor Defense, their Honor Guard gun, uh, which I carry on the site. But they have a special going on for 20% off of anything Honor Guard, CO1, Team Never Quit, 9 mil related. So all that's on the site at 20% off. So if you wanted to try that stuff out. And then the Maker Bullets, you can get them from uh, makerbullets.com. Uh, very simply. Uh, and I don't carry those. I, I have some. So if you're looking for a specific one, I might have it. But typically, it's easier to go to, uh, to Maker Bullets to, to get specific uh, rounds. So is Maker Bullets part of Interior Alliance? Yes. Okay. So yeah. if an Interior Alliance uh, life member like myself was wanting to, is there discounts available? Just come through me. It's much easier to come through me and ask what you want, and I'll get it for you and get you your discount. All right. It's so, it, it. Yeah, it's I. I try to do that for all the companies so that they don't have a bunch of people calling them looking yeah. for a discount. It's easier just to come through me and so I get the discount and get it out to you. Yeah. Okay. So we're just all calling you now. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. So if you're and here's a Lions life member, or I, I think they got what Even a yearly member too. Yearly member is not too, but if you're a, a life member or yearly member, <clears throat> see Tom about uh, getting your discount uh, for these different ammunitions. Yeah, and I anything on my site uh, doesn't have to be an Antares Alliance uh, company. I give that same discount. Uh, whatever I have on my site, I, I give the discount. So, awesome. yeah, That's a great deal. Yep. Now let me ask about wingspan outfitters. Is that wing dash span or is that all together? All together, wingspan outfitters. Okay. So I had some wingspan that had a dash in it or something on some of the. Email. Yeah, that was that's my that's my main company. That's Wingspan Solutions. Okay, gotcha. So not to confuse it with that, that's my overarching company, and then Wingspan Outfitters is the e e commerce site. It's hard to keep up with you guys. Okay. Oh, dude, it's hard to keep up with myself. I don't get it half the time I'm doing. <laughs> I've only got like five or six links in here. All right, so good deal. So I appreciate you guys coming on. Anything else new? And I know that Brian said that he's got the the, the what was it coming out? The six point five and the six five three more. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I got to get some of that from you guys, man. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, we'll definitely help you out there. Thanks. Well, we'll have to come up your way and shoot it. That's it. You got to come out to Polson, man. They got that two mile range out there. Oh, that sounds great. Yeah. We've it's got awesome. an 1800 yard range down here at, at uh, Park City called uh, 
Rock Castle. We, we so, don't have to shoot across the road, do we? No. 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 <laughs> you got to shoot over the golf course, there. You got to <laughs> go holler four. <laughs> four before you shoot, and then you can shoot across the golf course. It's awesome. It's awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, I appreciate you guys coming on tonight. Short nose. Yeah, thanks for having us. Well, I thought that we had. Thank this, you very much. We had this set up with uh, Ron and Casey, and then like Ron's like, "I'm hunting bears in Maine." Now. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> three weeks ago you told me he's going to be on tonight, and then yeah. uh, Casey's like uh, undercover spy now. I don't know why he's he's doing something nefarious somewhere. So I, I don't know what happened to him, but <laughs> I appreciate you coming on time and Brian and tell yeah, us. Yeah, not a problem. Things. And uh, yeah, anytime you guys have a new product, you know, reach out to us, and we'll be glad to let let people know about. It. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, just just so everybody knows, and you know, you guys as well. You know, with Antares, we vet everything we do, and you know, even with the Mid America coming in. So, when these guys start talking about you know the rounds, uh, you know, everything has been vetted, and typically it's vetted by spec ops, uh, law enforcement, uh, typical you know army shooters, navy shooters, whatever. They've all looked at this stuff and they they're backing it in one way, shape, or form. And so Team Never Quit obviously is Marcus Luttrell, Reaper Control Chaos is Ron Bell and Retired Seal, Mid America, you know, all the guys over there. And just it's crazy the number of people that look at this stuff and go, This stuff's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And you know, that the the experience behind it and all the stuff that's been going into every product that we carry and everything we look at, they're all good products. And so, and the other nice thing about it is we back this stuff 110%. And so if you don't like it, especially every product I carry, call me and I'll figure out how to make it right for you. So. Yeah. And we're the same way on this end. If any of, you know, yep. anyone that has our ammo has any issues, just give us a call good and we'll make it right. And that's the beauty of Antares Alliance. Every one of us is that way. So. Yep. Yeah, I've never had a bad product. Uh, I've, I've bought uh, glasses. I've gotten, uh, what is it, the SSP eyewear stuff. I've gotten uh, at, at the different shows. I picked up all kinds of different products. Never had any problem. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, got, I, got, I got to switch to bifocals, man. You got them on the bottom? I got them on the top. I got the top focus so I can yeah. see you at the top. I got to read. So yeah. I, got, I had to get something. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I got I got the, the tinted ones for the daytime. I mean, out in the sunshine, yeah. I got the clear ones for shoot houses and it, you know low light conditions, and then I, yeah. I got uh, the what was the other ones? The ones that had the readers on, like you got. So yeah, they're great. And yeah. I've they got came out with a polarized version too. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I got sets. No, I got, <laughs> I, I got polarized. I got those. I got three sets of because uh, I'm all the time having a hard time seeing it since I turned forty. Well, okay, yeah. since I turned fifty now. <laughs> Hard times. Man, I'm getting old. I'm getting depressed. I gotta get up here. Okay, so thanks a lot, guys. We appreciate it again. And I, Thank I, you. I've never had a bad product, and uh, so you guys check out uh, Interior Alliance's different offerings besides ammunition too. All right, guys. Well, good night. We'll talk to you later. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thanks, guys. All right. So. Where are we at, Doug? That sounds like some pretty cool stuff, man. I know it is. Helping out the show. They are gone. Let's see. Uh, how about the show? Patreon. We had a request from several people to get a Patreon account. We put it off for years. Actually, really, like two or three years. <laughs> Finally, we got one. And then people started like giving us money. So we're like, cool. Thank you. So patreon.com forward slash gun guns. If you would like to give us a donation, uh, Tim Kim, Doug Schultz, tied for third is Steve Stone and Shane Copeland. We appreciate you guys uh, supporting the show uh, month in and month out, uh, even through our uh, thin times when we have disappeared and gotten sick or just been too busy to actually throw something together for you guys. You still support us, and we appreciate that. Uh, yeah. Other links you can do to show, support our show, join the NRA. Uh, if you join the NRA, uh, it was they'll send us a little bit of love. Got a check in the mail today from one of you guys, or from the NRA, because one of you guys uh, renewed your subscription. I uh, really appreciate that. DeVore, DVOR, where I got that, uh, that Franklin Armory trigger uh, that's supposed to be in Monday. Um, I uh, got, what was it? It was 30 so it was like $30 cheaper from going through DeVore than buying it directly from Franklin Armory. But uh, if you don't know what DeVore is, it's a clearinghouse for Optics Planet. If you use our link that will, uh, and you purchase something down the road, 
uh, they will send us a little bit of love. Laser activated shot report. Uh, if you use the coupon code G A N D G, you get 10% discount at laser activated shot report. If you don't know what that is, go to L A S R A P P.com. You can see videos, you can see all the descriptions on how it works much better than I can describe over this, um, venue we're on here right now. Yeah, they got a new product coming out. I just saw John was, uh, had sent it, put a YouTube video on his own personal page. They've got their own uh, shot timer that uh, hooks up to your phone oh really it's got a remote uh, like microphone so it picks up better than you know like you get these shot timer apps but they right. pick up if you bump into the table or you set your stuff down on the table whatever it picks up all kinds of those other noises and counts those as shots because it just doesn't really have the ability to decipher what a real shot frequency is right with the microphone that's on your phone but this one has an external microphone that's uh, wirelessly connected and uh, he was demonstrating it out there. Uh, you know, he's got his phone up showing all the window about, you know, split times and first shot, last shot, all that stuff. But uh, he's got a new product coming up. So we're going to have him back on the show to tell us all about that. Uh, if you uh, know John, you can check out his video over on YouTube. Hoplite Armor, if you need body armor, go to Hoplite Armor. Uh, our buddy Lyman Bishop has uh, got some of the coolest stuff I've ever seen. Uh, he's got all kinds of. Uh, shields and helmets and shoulder pad uh, armor protection and all different levels rifle plates and he's got it all so if you use our link uh, we're an affiliate and uh, they'll send us some love if you buy something through us zija i've told you guys about zija i'm not going to talk a whole lot about it here but it just it helped me lose weight it helped me get healthy it helped me um, improve my uh, life and that I wasn't in his pain as much and got me out of some chronic back pain, neck pain. Uh, if you want to know more about it, go to godandguns.mazija.com. And then you get the last ones. Crossbreed holsters. We've been telling you, Troy, I carry our, our firearms and super tuck deluxe. I love it. Uh, they have different holsters out there for any occasion you're going to, you can, um, out in the woods. Um, it doesn't, Whoa, kick, kick the counter. Um, they're just great holsters. They are. They have the Super Tuck, the Cross or the Freedom Carry, the Drop Slide, uh, the Bedside Backup. Uh, there's just so many to mention. If you're carrying a gun, you should be carrying the Crossbreed holsters. Go check those guys out, CrossbreedHolsters.com. And last but not least, Axelson Tactical. Go out and check these guys out. They make precision rifles, handguns, and uh, they make some nice knives as well. Uh, if you want a tack driving rifle, go out and check out Axelson Tactical and get you one. You can use our promo code God in Guns and get a 10% discount on me and Troy just for listening. So check them out, AxelsonTactical.com. And they NRA Armed Citizen, Doug, what do you got? NRA Armed Citizen. Um, Fell and fatally shot while breaking into a rural Idaho home. Joseph Lloyd uh, was released from jail two weeks before the break-in and subsequent shooting. A man was shot and killed early Friday morning as he attempted to break in a home located outside the rural town of Downey, Idaho. Uh, the Bannock County Sheriff's Office identified the deceased suspect as Joseph Lloyd, 34. Lloyd is... Uh, uh, Pocatello is from Pocatello, which is about 40 miles north of where the break-in occurred. According to a press release from the sheriff's office, authorities responded to what was described as a suspicious incident af just after 4 a.m. when deputies arrived at the scene. They found Lloyd had been shot, but uh, no foul play was suspected. The initial investigation indicated Lloyd who was pronounced dead at the scene, was shot as he attempted to break into the home. Although authorities did not say whether Lloyd was inside the home when the shooting occurred. An autopsy is scheduled to be performed and, and will determine um, how many times Lloyd was shot. Well, that would have probably been pretty easy to just look at right there, I would think, but maybe not. It's not a good group then. <laughs> 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 well, that's true. What if he got shot with a shotgun, you know? Well, that's, that's, that's possible, too. Uh, the sheriff's also confirmed uh, there was no further threat to the community and that the break-in and subsequent shooting was an isolated incident. It's 
unclear if Lloyd um, was accompanied with or acquainted with the homeowners or if the break-in was a, a random crime. But according to the Idaho State Journal, Lloyd uh, has a lengthy criminal history. In fact, he was released from the, the Bannock County Jail just two weeks ago or two weeks ago after having served time for felony drug charges. Uh, no charges are expected to be filed against the homeowner whose name has not been released. The investigation thus far indicates he acted in defense of himself and other family members who were in the home at the time of the incident, although it's unclear if Lloyd was armed with a weapon as well. While Idaho is not a stand-your-ground state, state law deems homicide justifiable when uh, when it is committed with a defense of habitation, property, or person against the subject who endeavors to commit a felony or otherwise offer offers violence toward a person uh, within a habitation. So he didn't fare very well. I'm going to buy you some glasses, Doug. <laughs> you're going to have to, man. <laughs> or you're going to have to turn up a larger print. We're getting heckled over. I'm getting heckled over. They're, they're making fun of my receding hairline. So they give me 50 bucks and I take my hat off. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you go see my receding hairline. There it is. There you go. <laughs> oh, y'all mean. All right. So <laughs> the reason I wear a hat is because the light shining off of it would like be this big unicorn star thing going on. <laughs> Be glaring. <laughs> through the whole show. <laughs> yeah, there it is. I have hair. It's just way back here. See? <clears throat> but then, uh, we'll see, if I take it off, I look like a bald uh, Princess Leia. So <laughs> I, I heard somebody had, uh, the other day was talking about the receding hairline. He said he didn't have a forehead. He had a five head now. <laughs> <laughs> I about a seven head, I think. This is <laughs> way back here. All right. So uh, we're going to wrap it up. We're both getting giddy, and it's late. And so we appreciate you guys hanging with us. <laughs> <laughs> we wrap it. Send your feedback to Troy at com or Doug at GuidingGunsPodcast.com. Please tell your friends about us. Like, <laughs> leave us an iTunes review, and like us on Facebook at Facebook.com forward slash Podcast. Subscribe to us and follow us on YouTube. And I put the link here because it's too long for me. YouTube has given us a humongously long link uh, for our YouTube channel. Uh, yeah. Follow us on Twitter at Guiding Guns Pod. Search for us on Instagram and like us on or find us on MeWe if you want to do a gun trade. I'm looking for a Glock 29 and uh, maybe a 6.5 Creed. <laughs> there you go. Krista, if you listen, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, so, well, website is <laughs> GuidingGunsPodcast.com. So, until next time, Doug, have a blessed week. And hey, keep your guns close, but keep your Bible closer. All right. Good night, guys. Good night, everybody. Uh, wrap this puppy up and put her in a can.